doing so well. If you're new here, my name is August. It's so nice for you all to join me for this weekly reading vlog. From Saturday until Tuesday, I like to kind of take you along with me on my little reading adventures and I post them every Thursday afternoon. So if you're new here, be sure to subscribe, like this video, follow along for each weekly reading vlog where I talk about the books that I'm currently reading, take you on some little ad bookish adventures and just have a jolly good time. I am actually currently at my parents' house. This is their bookshelf. It is definitely <laughs> wingspan over here. It is huge and I thought this would be a great place to kick off this reading vlog. I'm spending the weekend over at my parents house. I am very grateful that I have the opportunity to be here because I don't see anybody. I work from home. I don't interact with other humans. That's the reason why my parents and myself feel safe and comfortable with spending an entire weekend over here. It's almost like a little vacation. I get to kind of reset and it feels good to be out of the house for a little bit too. Just kind of shake up the environment, especially after being, you know, in quarantine for almost an entire year now. <laughs> so I'm currently reading three books, which I would love to tell you all about. And on Monday, I am getting my COVID vaccine, my first round, and I'm super, super excited about it. Other news that I'll be doing today is uh, <laughs> doing something new with my hair. My mom is the only person who cuts or touches my hair. I've only been to a hair salon twice in my life because she's a cosmetologist. So I'm actually doing something very new with my hair that I've never done on my own volition. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm also really nervous. I hope it turns out okay. Who knows? Now, on to some reading updates. I am still trucking away at Love in the Time of Cholera by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. I am reading this along with Julie, whose YouTube video I will link down below. They have a whole collection of like hour long videos of them reading this book out loud. And that's the only way that I'm reading this book. I'm not reading it without those videos. I will also link uh, my last week's reading vlog so you all can see when I actually picked up this book and my thoughts on it so far. Um, kind of having a, an experience with this book, let me tell you. I'm also listening to an absolutely fantastic audiobook called Fear of the Black Body, The Racial Origins of Fat Shaming by Sabrina Strings. Holy shit. This book is so good, so informative. I'm listening to this over on the Libby app, so it's a free audiobook, and it is just blowing my mind. This is definitely a book that I need to kind of keep a notebook on hand so I can take notes on it as I'm listening to it because every sentence feels like it's something new that I never knew about history. And it starts chronologically, starting with almost the Renaissance period and all these famous painters who were fascinated with the female body and talking about in those times, it was desirable by the male gaze to be a voluptuous woman. And then it kind of catalogs how that was desired, but then when black women and women of color were being brought into the UK and Europe through the slave trade, even if they were voluptuous, they were seen as being too large, too fat, all of these things and how uh, this book almost kind of catalogs the origin of the trope of like the fat black woman. I'm just learning so much from this book. I highly recommend it already and I'm really excited to continue to share my thoughts with you all on it. I am also reading 
I'll Eat When I'm Dead by Barbara Borland. Well, this book definitely has some trigger warnings for eating disorders, but this is so well written. I really, really love it. I found this copy over at Dollar Tree. If you're a fan of Devil Wears Prada, Sex in the City, but also like murder mystery crime thrillers, this is probably right up your alley. It takes place at a fashion magazine that is very similar to Vogue and the stereotypes that were portrayed in Devil Wears Prada of these really incredibly smart women, but it is so fashion forward and it's a cutthroat industry. And in order to work in this industry, you also have to be skinny and gorgeous and wear really nice, fancy, expensive, clothes. One of the women who works at this magazine is found dead and her autopsy revealed that she was suffering from anorexia and they believe that she really died from starvation um, until months later the case is reopened because someone has sent a letter that was written in her handwriting uh, almost kind of cluing to the fact that there is something a miss here. There's something wrong. I absolutely love the descriptions of the kind of chaotic magazine editor behind the scenes. I love the descriptions of the clothes and the jewelry and the fashion. Being a magazine editor and working for a magazine was my biggest dream ever since I was in fifth grade. Even before then, I would actually make fake magazines and collect all of these stories and eclectic things and write my own magazines. I actually worked in the fashion industry for a little bit as a fashion photographer and um, I've worked with a number of models, experienced and inexperienced, and it really is a very intense industry. So it's really cool to kind of peek behind the curtain in this book. And the writing is just so eclectic. It almost feels like you're reading a magazine with all of the strange metaphors and symbolism. I will read the first sentence for you all so you understand what I mean of the, the writing style. The first sentence of this book reads, every weekday morning as the sun rose above of Sixth Avenue, a peerless crop of women, frames poised, behavior polished, networks connected, and bodies generally buffed to a high sheen were herded by the cattle prod of their own ambition to one particular building. I am a little bit past chapter two, I believe. I'm only 36 pages in. I'm having so much fun with it. It was a perfect pick. I'm really happy I picked it up. Those are the books I'm going to be reading this weekend for this vlog. Now on to some reading and just enjoying a lovely Saturday afternoon. I hope you're all sitting somewhere cozy and you can hang out and relax with me.
it is now Monday. I haven't been able to update you all in quite a while, but I just finished filming my February wrap up, which I will link down below for you all because it's going live tomorrow. And I wanted to show off a little bit this wonderful bookcase that my partner and I picked up um, like Friday night, I think, Thursday or Friday night. And I love it so much. This is my new like filming area. I have, I don't know if you can tell, yeah, some flowers over here. And this is my physical TBR shelf right here, as well as down here. And now I have this like giant desk where I can put my coffee and I can put my stack of books. These are all the books that I read in February and have like a new area to film. So that's really exciting. Um, I'm obviously back home from my parents' house, so I thought I would just give you all a little update on what's happening. It was a really lovely weekend. It was really relaxing. It honestly went by way too fast. Uh, I did not like that. But in a little bit here, I do have to go get my COVID vaccine, my first dose. I am nervous. I'm excited. I've got kind of like a little bit of the chills because I'm a little... I don't know. I guess something like whenever there's something new or I have to go somewhere new, like my my anxiety definitely spikes just because like I've never been to this area. It's actually a little bit of a drive for me. Um, so I just want to make sure like I'm on time and, you know, normal human anxiety stuff that I feel like a lot of anxious folks have. So you know what I mean. But yeah, that's my update. My mom did a fantastic job of cutting my bangs. She just rocks it every every time. Like she just... It was so easy. She just was like, oh, yeah, and got them, and they look great. So thank you, Mom. You're the best. I really like them. So if you've been kind of contemplating bangs, like, why not? Like, just, just try them out. Like my mom said, she's a cosmetologist. She says everyone looks cute in bangs. Hi friends, happy Tuesday. Oh my gosh, I'm sitting on the floor because the sun is coming in and it feels so good because it's actually really, really cold out. It doesn't look like it would be, but it's freezing. Um, and my bangs are nuts. I haven't quite figured out like what my style is gonna be for my bangs, but obviously right now they look freaking wild. I, I don't know. So yesterday I got my COVID vaccine. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And it was so easy. It was a really easy process. Like once I actually showed up at the facility, I got my first dose of the Pfizer vaccine and it went really well. Uh, my arm on my left arm is really, really sore. Um, and then I have to get the other one in three weeks. So that's exciting. And while I was there, I stupidly forgot to bring a book yesterday. So I was like, okay, I'm going to look on Libby and uh, see if there's any graphic novels that I can just read while I'm here. And there was, and I am currently reading Skim. Um, oh, I don't remember the author's name, but I'll put it here. Um, and wow, I, I really like this. I didn't get that far into it. Honestly, I have no idea what the plot is, but I really like the art style of this graphic novel. I don't know much about it, but I'm liking it. Then today I got a text from my mom saying that there is a local library that's like 20 minutes away that is moving and they have a 25 cent book sale. So um, Alec and I decided to go on a very spontaneous trip this morning out there and we got so many books and collectively, yeah, it was still under $5, which is wild. <laughs> um, I got some really awesome books. I got one classic, I got some contemporaries, I got a graphic novel, um, just some really freaking fun stuff and 
it was just so spontaneous. Like we just kind of woke up and we're like, hey, let's let's go there. And then we decided to go get some breakfast at IHOP and I had some strawberry and banana pancakes and it was great. Like I love days like this where it's just like a little adventure and it includes getting really cheap books and finding things. The funny thing is I included it in the compilation, but they actually had there, see if I can move my arm. It hurts so bad, it's so sore. They had I'll Eat When I'm Dead at the used library book sale and I got this at Dollar Tree. Oh, you can see the shadow of my plant. That's really cool. Yeah, so that I just thought that was pretty wild um, that they had that there and they were selling it for 25 cents. Speaking of which, I am now a little over halfway in this book and I'm still loving it. It's just so much fun. Um, there's definitely some like very smutty, sexy scenes in here. I really like the plot. I think it's really interesting. I am curious to see where it goes because I honestly have no idea where it's going since I started this book. Oh my god, Umi is blessed out right now. His eyes are closed. Are you, what are you doing? Oh my god, he's just like sunbathing. <laughs> As I'm currently reading, I'm now in the middle of like four books, uh, which is, I realize when I read more than one book at a time, it takes me even longer to get through them, you know, and like finish them. So like my goal for today, because right now it's only like 1230, I think I could finish either this book or I can finish Skim, the graphic novel. So my goal today is just, I guess, just to finish at least one book. I'm going to sit on the floor here and continue to read. It's just one of those days where I'm just reminded again how much I just love I love books and I love them every day and I think about them every day and I think about how much I love them every day but like I'm having a moment right now where I'm just like wow I just collected a bunch of stories and I brought them into my house and I put them on my shelf and like now I can like read them anytime I want ah I don't know it's just so it's so heartwarming I love it so okay back to some reading Hey friends, this angle is so dumb, but hi, I'm way down here. I just wanted to show off a little bit more of this bookcase and this absolutely gorgeous gallery wall that we got up last night. I love it so much and I wanted to give you all some updates with my pina colada. It is now Wednesday. I just finished doing a workout. I'm sweaty. I'm gross. I really want to take a shower but first I want to update you all so I can conclude this vlog. So yesterday I was able to, I need to put down my colada. Pina colada smoothies are my new favorite thing in the entire world. Like oh my god they're so good. I was able to finish I'll Eat When I'm Dead by Barbara Borland. I end up giving this like four stars on Goodreads, but in reality, it's more like a like a 3.75. Um, the last half of the book really disappointed me. The ending was so anticlimactic and really frustrating. I thought there would be like something more sinister, you know, than this. Overall, I did enjoy the writing style. Um, apparently, this author used to be a freelancer for Condé Nast, so I really liked the editorial writing. Um, the characters also felt really flat. Um, it was like we were told their personalities rather than actually ever seeing their personalities. And that's another thing that I feel like it, a lot of authors do where like I end up just giving their books four stars is just because like their characters, it's hard to write characters, but sometimes it's, we're just told their personalities and what they're like rather than actually seeing it and understanding based on their interactions with other people or their emotions. And the satire was really well done. I think it really <laughs> made me uncomfortable talking about the fashion industry and capitalism and the effect that the fashion industry has on 
literally everything. Uh, content warnings, like I think I mentioned earlier, do include um, eating disorders and addiction. So please be sure to look up a little bit more about the content warnings before diving into this one. But yeah, the first half, I really enjoyed reading it. I thought it was just such a fun read. I think it was a really fun like summer one. I enjoyed it, uh, but yeah, not, not an absolute favorite. So there is that book. So then this morning I was able to finish reading Skim by Mariko Tamaki and wow. I really liked this graphic novel. I really did. It went by way too fast and I think it ended a little too abruptly, especially because I was reading it on my Kindle so you don't have that feeling of like knowing how many pages are left in a book and then all of a sudden it was like acknowledgements. <laughs> I was like, no, wait, what? Um, it ended very abruptly for my taste. Uh, that was the only downside. That's really what I made me give it like four stars because there was no resolution nothing really happened this was like a really little slice of life but it was so beautifully done it was so good so relatable it follows this 16 year old girl named kim and her nickname is skim and she's kind of like the outcast of school she's into the occult she's learning and studying to be a wiccan a witch and she ends up falling into this relationship with her teacher um, and it just is this weird slice of life where she's struggling with her friendship with her one best friend, she's struggling in the relationship with her teacher, um, she's struggling in a relationship with all the popular kids at school and stereotypes and labels and all of these things. One of the teenagers at the school committed suicide and there's just a lot of talk about that, about how teenagers kind of like make fun of it. Um, make fun of depression, make fun of being gay. So there's a lot of like trigger warnings and content warnings for that subject as well. But it just felt really relatable in terms of just like being a teenager and that little slice of life that you have where you just kind of go through these weird things and you don't realize how much it shapes you and how much it changes your life um, until you kind of look back on it. But at the moment you're just living through it and you're having a difficult time and you don't really see a future for yourself. I think we can all relate to that feeling, whether you're in, you were in high school or you were in college when you experienced it. Overall, it was just so well done, and I would love to read more of Mariko's work in the future because beautiful. It was very great. Still trekking through this, boy. Um, I read an hour along with Julie, whose video I will link down below, and an hour got us like another 20 pages in. I am now officially at the 40% mark. <laughs> It's grueling. It's grueling. It's difficult. I really don't care. I really just want to get through this. It's taking me forever. I'm not really having a good time. If anyone has read this and they enjoyed it, if you can send me some like motivational, like, like keep going, it gets good, like some sort of sign <laughs> that I should keep reading this because right now I'm, I just want to like sit down and finish it, but it's taking me forever. But I want to see why it's a classic. Like why, why is this hyped I <laughs> so yeah if you've read it and you liked love in the time of cholera let me know why why should I keep reading it because I'm at 40% it's taken me forever that is it my friends that concludes this week's reading vlog follow along for next week's reading vlog come out with one every week delicious content bookish things talking in depth about the reads and yeah, stay tuned for next week as well, where I'll be talking about all the awesome books that I got at the library book sale. These ones my partner got, and they look really cool. I'm honestly very envious. He picked some awesome books. And yeah, I'll go over like a giant book haul, and that will include my recent finds from this weekend. I'm really excited to share that with you all. Thank you so much for being here, you all. I appreciate you so much. Stay cozy, my friends. Bye.